Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing, man? It's Anelli here. Okay, so I was working with this hitter a couple of weeks ago. It's a high school hitter, a young high school hitter. And we were working on three things. And these are really the three things that we work on all the time. And we're going to talk about them. I'm going to show them. We're going to talk about some of the drills that we did. Because we made really, really good progress. The hitter came in for two hours. Uh, it probably took us about 45 minutes to see really big changes. And then we continued to refine those and, and try to help her be able to consistently use those mechanics when she swings. And the goal is ultimately to not even have to think about it. You just swing, and, and this is the way your body moves. So let's look at it real quick. And again, three things that we're trying to work on. First one is bat path, getting the barrel turned behind the ball earlier and from the inside. So being short and from the inside as much as possible. The second thing is bat quickness. So how quickly can I say go and my barrel is launched and I'm able to get my barrel to the hitting zone. Right? The quicker I can do that, the more successful I can be. The longer I can see the ball, the more information I get, and the quicker I can get to the ball ultimately. And the third thing is bat speed. The faster I can swing the bat, the harder I can hit the ball. Really simple. Okay, so um, first, let me show you the difference here. Um, and this is relatively quick. But you can see when she says go on the left versus go on the right, a couple different things are happening here. So first, let's check out the bat path. So bat path, let's start on the one on the right because this is the before. So you notice her bat path on the one on the right. What was happening, and let me actually fast forward a little bit because I kind of scroll through here. Here we go. Okay. So on the one on the right, what was happening a lot is she was getting around the ball. And she wasn't so much getting down through the hitting zone. She was very flat through the hitting zone. But what was happening is she was getting around the ball. And so you can see when she goes, the lead arm kind of works down. Right? The barrel kind of falls behind her. And now it's got to come around her body. She almost has to try to get out of her own way. And she was getting around the ball, rolling over. Uh, and the barrel's not as quick. When the barrel has to take a route to the ball like this versus being inside, it's going to take longer. Okay, So that was the first thing as far as, as her path. Again, quickness. We talk about back quickness. If I'm not able to turn the barrel from the inside, not only will I not get good ball flight, but I'm also not going to be as quick. Right, so if my barrel, again, is taking this outside path, I'm not going to be able to hit the ball as well as I want. Those are really the two big things. Bat speed, you know, the better we use our body, the better sequence that we're in, we're going to be able to swing the bat faster. So now that we see that, right, we see how that path is getting out in the round. The barrel's not getting behind the ball as early as we want. And we're not as short and quick with as good a bat speed. How do we fix that? So... We did a bunch of different drills, but I want you to see some of, the, some of the main things right here. So the first thing, if we back up a little bit, let's go back to this part again. Okay, right here. So the first thing you're going to notice is that we got this leg loaded better, right? So to do that, we took our back pocket, we turned it this way, which got our hips to slightly close, and got the, the rear leg to load back there, right? So you can see the crease right here in her pants. You can definitely see that the back of her right pocket is both closer to that net and then slightly more turned this way than this one is, right? Both her back pockets are equally as close to the net on the before, and you can see how the, the right back pocket isn't turned this way. You can see how her hips are just kind of slightly open, and you can see how this back leg right here isn't loaded as much. All right, so that's the first thing, getting the leg to turn and load back to that. Uh, two things, one, we're able to control our weight and not just fall forward into the front side because when we fall forward into the front side early, so if my weight gets shifted early too fast forward into our lead leg, you can kind of see what happens here. So notice on the one on the right, see how her weight is falling. So she's saying go at the same time, right? So you can see her say go, and I have these synced up to go. Um, but the one on the right, you can notice that she's just kind of falling into her front leg. So her leg hasn't started to turn yet. She's falling forward. Her bat isn't turning yet. It's just kind of lowering. But she has said go at the same time, right? So now you have a bat that's just kind of falling behind her. You have her weight pushing forward. The right leg hasn't turned yet. 
And so just think about one, think about back quickness. Are we going to be able to get the barrel to the ball quicker doing this? When I say go, right, so I say right here I go, go, bang. And this barrel starting the turn, leg starting the turn, right? So am I going to be able to get there quicker doing this or quicker doing this where when my body or my brain says go and I've got to shift forward, my barrel's going to fall kind of back behind my body, and now I've got to try to get my barrel from back here to get around me somehow, right? Again, on the one on the left, you can see the second she says go, see how her right leg is turning? So I can just kind of scrub this like this, right? So look at the difference in turn on the one on the left versus on the one on the right, just kind of falling, right? Still no turn. Barrel's not picking up speed, just kind of falling back behind her, right? So that's the first thing we did. We worked a lot on loading the back leg, being able to control our weight as we move forward. I've got this ball right here. A lot of people ask me. I put this on Instagram. They said, what's that ball for? Ball essentially is we, we do a lot of drills. We do a coil drill, a half coil drill. So a full coil, half coil. I have them on our YouTube channel. You can go check them out. Um, but we always start with those. And then we, um, I like to go to a crate drill or a med ball drill. We also call it a hover drill. We're going to put our lead foot up on the ball. We're not going to have any weight on it. We're going to work on loading the rear leg, and then we're going to take the foot off the ball. We're going to stride while keeping this leg loaded and keeping our hips coiled and our back pocket on the pitcher. That's not what I wanted to do right there. Um, so our hips will stay coiled, back pocket stays on the pitcher as we stride out. And that teaches us how to control our weight and not just fall forward. And when you control your weight and start to stride out, you're going to read the ball. And if you're perfectly on time for the pitch you're looking for, your leg should start to turn just as your, your stride foot is coming down into the ground. right? So just as it's coming down into the ground, your right foot should turn when you're on time. You know, there's going to be times where you're early. right? You think you're getting one pitch, you get another, and there's a little bit of a delay. But when you're on time... This is what it should look like. And when you do that, you're able to turn your leg much more. Your leg just kind of flies around, and the barrel's going to start to turn really, really quickly. When you don't do that and you start to shift your weight early, you get forward. Well, we talked about how your back gets slower, right? But then your back path is hurt because, one, you're not clearing a path for your, for your barrel to get into the hitting zone. You can't be from the inside. Your body's getting in the way, and so now I've got to do this. But when my, when my weight shifts forward early... I end up not being able to turn the barrel as fast as I want. I end up kind of pushing the barrel forward more than I want. I don't have the bat speed that I want. Right? Once I start getting forward with my body, it really hurts my ability to let the barrel whip right? and turn the barrel really, really fast. So those are all really, really important. We also, uh, when it came to the pullback, and we talk about pulling back a lot, getting the rear elbow behind um, the right hand for righty, uh, both, both pullbacks were pretty similar. But when you start to get a coil of the lower body, you'll start to get this upper body kind of doing the same thing. Your lead shoulder will roll in a little bit. All right? And so you'll see a little bit of that there. Another big thing that we did is I tried to get her to feel like she was going to keep this knob towards the catcher's feet and keep it there the whole time. And when she says go, she's going to turn palm up, palm down, and get this knob starting to turn. What she did before, as you can see when she says go, is she kind of lets the barrel just fall flat behind her and now the knob starts getting higher and higher. You can already see this knob is turning, and all this knob did was kind of just pick up a little bit towards the umpire's face mask. And so that's what we did with the pullback. Now, the next thing was getting the upper body to work back, and you can really see it in this shot right here. So when she says go, notice how her upper body is working back, right? So her leg is turning this way, and her upper body is working like that. In the other one, when she says go, you can see her upper body doesn't work back. It's just kind of working forward. Right? And so, again, I'm going to get forward with it. And so if I really want to get some torque, some separation, what you want is you want your leg, your back leg, turning forward and everything above that going back. That's how you get separation. Right? If I got an elastic band, if I got an elastic band and I want to shoot that thing, I'm going to put one thumb right here and I'm going to take my other hand and put my index finger and thumb over here. I'm going to push that thumb forward. I'm going to pull this back two opposite directions. Now I've got the band stretched and then I can fire instantly. Leg goes this way. Everything else goes that way. Barrel goes that way. Upper body goes that way. And now I've created some torque or separation to be able to whip the barrel around my body. When your leg starts to go this way and your upper body goes this way and your barrel starts to go this way, you don't create any of that separation or torque. Okay, so 
I need my upper body to work back. And see that right there. And if you look at any real elite hitter, they're going to do this. Right? Some people fight and say, oh, you know, some people teach this. Oh, keep your, up, keep your right shoulder up. Don't let it drop. Well, you can't create much bad seat with that. And you're not going to be able to get from the inside. You're going to be around the ball. All right, so you can see upper body working back. And then what do we talk about with the hands? We talk about turning the hands, palm up, palm down, trying to get this top hand to go palm up, trying to get the knob to start to turn up like this. Right? So your knob is going to start to go like this, and then it's going to turn up. Right? It's going to cause your barrel to do that. Your barrel is always going to follow your knob. You take the knob just straight down, you're going to take the barrel straight down. If the knob goes out like this, the barrel is going to go out like this. You want to stay tight from the inside and think about turning the knob up. Look at the knob on the one here. See how it's not turning? So there's no turning of the knob right there. She's just kind of taking both her hands and arms and just kind of going like this. The one on the left, you can see her turning, palm up, right? And that gets the barrel to turn back. The whole idea is to get the barrel to go fast. Notice how the barrel's going fast on the one on the left. Notice how the barrel's not doing anything on the barrel on, on the right, right? The barrel on the right's not doing anything. It's not picking up any speed. And then as we keep going, right, look at the path on the one on the left. The one on the left, she's now created a path to get from the inside. The one on the right, she's still in her own way. Leg hasn't turned, she's forward. Upper body hasn't worked back. Lead arm's gonna work down instead of up, which we work on here. Once you start turning the knob up, your lead arm works up like this, right? And now, look at this. Which one's gonna be able to get a cleaner path to the ball, right? That's a cleaner path. This, she's fighting the barrel to try to get up or get around her body. Leg hasn't turned at all. Look at the stripe on her leg. Look at the stripe on her leg, right? And so this is a clean path from the inside. If the ball's away, whack, I hit it out there. Ball's middle, I hit it there. Ball's in, I do, I do that. What do I do from here, right? Like here, it's like really tough to try to get this barrel around my body. It's like, ah, get out of my own way, right? Let me fast forward a little bit, okay? So it's like I'm stuck in here. Now I'm like, ah, get get the barrel there but it's really hard to get the barrel there now she was good i could tell she practiced a lot i told her right away like the things we were working on she just picked up on them so fast so i knew she worked a lot she practiced a lot but she just didn't work her body the way that she needed to to make her swing even more consistent this is from you know she was being successful from good hand eye lots of practice and i told her you can be you can be good doing that but you can be great if you have those that ability and then you put a swing that will help you be even more consistent don't be successful just because you have ability the great players in my mind they're successful because they have a, a mechanical advantage with their swing their swing works better than the other hitters then if you have hand eye you have strength and speed quickness and all that stuff well that's how you become like an elite player so that's what we that's what, how I kind of explained it to her and then she just went to work and started we, we went through the drills, and she picked it up super fast. And I could tell within two minutes. This is interesting. I'll tell you this real quick. I could tell within two minutes, did the very first drill, and I told her to make an adjustment. Bang, she made the adjustment. I said, okay, now make this adjustment. Boom, she did this. I said, two minutes in, I said, you're going to figure this out, like, super fast. In one hour, you're going to have a totally different swing. And she did. Um, because she listened, she bought into what I was saying, and then she was able to, to make the adjustments. Like super, super fast, and not every player is able to do that. But again, this is like an hour in between each swing, and you can see how different it is. So some people say, oh, you can't fix things that fast, like you've done it this way your whole life. I see it happen all the time. I take lots of hitters in an hour, two hours, and they change their swing like completely. And if I, show, if, I if she had different a uniform on here, most people would guess this has got to be like, you know, months, years later. No, it's an hour later. So that's all I have. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Give it a thumbs up. All that good stuff. We'll talk to you later. If you've enjoyed this video and want to learn more about building the elite swing, check out our new course. We have over two hours of content, almost 30 hitting drills. We break down the exact mechanics that you're going to want to implement into your swing. I've put the link in the description if you want to go check it out.